Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Dollars to Donuts, which is a puzzly, chocolatey, sugary, sprinkly, mmm, donutsy kind of game. It's on Kickstarter right now. You can check out the campaign page if you'd like to. It's linked in the description or in the corner of the screen. And as always, I mentioned that I was paid to make this overview video. So what's going on? We are trying to make donuts. We have these pieces here. We have four identical pieces amongst each of the players. And our only restriction to start the setup is they can't share a row or column. There is a setup variant that's more balanced where one person you know, sets them up and then everyone copies. So everyone's starting off on the same foot, but this is the standard way. First player gets this lovely rubbery donut, although, you know, this is a prototype, so... You know, the, the Kickstarter page will be more of an authority on what the final game will contain. We also start off with some donut holes. I have four plain and one chocolatey. These are tiles that, you know, once a turn, we'll get to put some of these tiles out onto our board. But also, they function as dollars, each one of them. So, throughout the game, we will be choosing donut tiles from here, these strips. You know, this first one costs zero and then they increase as you go along and they get slid along and refilled as they get bought. And we are trying to make complete donuts. But whether you want them to match or not will kind of depend on your situation. Because, you know, on my first turn, I could take a tile like this and then Marty would take one and try and complete his thing. I've completed a chocolate donut here. When you complete a matching donut, you take that kind of donut tile from the display here and that is worth two points to me at the end of the game it's one point for glaze two points for chocolate three points for icing and sprinkles and five for jelly filled i believe that one is and making this video is suddenly making me realize how long it's been since i've had a lovely elaborate donut anyway so i've made this chocolate donut here and then on a future turn, for example, you know, not all this would get slid along and Marty would get a turn and stuff. But in a future turn, say I were to take a tile like this, I can now start to make bigger connections here. And, you know, the ones that don't match up don't get you anything, but I could start getting more and more chocolate donuts. But what you can also do is make mismatched donuts. And you might want to do this with the fancier donuts, you know, the, the chocolate or the sprinkles because as you can see on the tile here they have different dollar amounts on them now if i was to match this sprinkles donut up i would get a lovely three points in this sprinkles token but if i were to mismatch it like say this i would get the chocolate token there but here i've mismatched and this is how you get more dollars because you're going to be spending them to get the tiles that you particularly want you look at the highest dollar value in the donut that you matched. So this sprinkles is $3. And then you grab the dollar bag and you are going to draw out three more dollars, which can be spent on putting these things out. But also on the other side, there are donut holes and there are pieces of donut as well. Because each turn, as well as taking one of these strips to fill in your board, you're allowed to put one of these tiles out onto the board as well. So that's how you're going to fill up awkward little gaps, but also score more points because you'll be able to complete more donuts, get more tokens or maybe more dollars if you are mismatching. You get points for every pair of donut holes that match on your board at the end of the game as well. One point for plain, two points for chocolate, and there are sprinkles ones in there as well, but they're rarer, so they're worth three points for each pair. So if we just cut to a little bit later on in a game here, you see we've built up some different dollar tokens and things. We've built up some different donuts. And by the way, you are allowed to put tiles off the board. They have to be on the board at least a square and you are being a bit wasteful. You know, nothing is getting used from this stuff that is going off the edge. But sometimes you'll need to do that and you're allowed. Another optional thing you can do each turn, as well as placing one of your dollar tiles on your board, is serve a customer. We have this queue of customers waiting for a delicious donut order and you can try and fill that order. Now you only get one shot at each customer. You can't give them a couple of donuts and give them more later. So here, Marty with all of his, he could serve Brandon over here and you put the tiles on them. So you're not gonna get the points for these tiles anymore, but you are gonna get the points for the customers. Now it works out to, you get a point extra per line that you fill in because you know this would be worth one point and two points, so three altogether. But now they're on the customer, you're going to get four points. And if you put the glazed on as well, that would be four plus three, would be seven. You get an extra point for this line. So Marty could serve Brandon here. He doesn't have though the special jelly filled donut. They are you know the rarest around. And jelly filled donuts, by the way, 
do not earn you any dollars for mismatching them. So Marty served Brandon, and Brandon is well chuffed. But on my turn, I could serve Angela over here, and I could serve, you know, the, the card itself is worth fewer points, but I've used much lower value donuts there. So I would have earned uh, a little bit more than Marty, one more extra point than him. So there are extra points available just for serving these parts on the customers, but also there are neighborhood bonuses to be had over the course of the game with them as well. For each full set of customers that you've served from each area, there's the Rose District, Sunset Heights, and Mount Timber, essentially the colors of the cards. For each set that you have served, you get three victory points. And then there is a little majority thing at the end of the game as well. Whoever served the most from each neighborhood gets an extra two points. And if it's tied, it's down to whoever served the most donuts on those customers. The game ends when someone has completely filled their mat and you play out the round so everyone's had the same number of turns. Or if we can't fill the specials board because there aren't enough tiles left. At the end of the game, you get points for the highest number on the customers that you served. So it'll be eight here, but also eight for Marty because he didn't manage to do that last line. The neighborhood bonuses, so points for each set and the majority of each color. The points for the pairs of donut holes on your player mats and any victory point tokens that you've got left over that you didn't serve to customers. They're worth the value written here. You then lose a point for every empty space that's still showing on your player mats. That's where putting tiles, you know, off the edge of the board might not be that beneficial. If someone's been really efficient and filled theirs up much more quickly, they might have gotten more done than you. And after all that, the player with the highest score wins. And if you tie, it's the most dollars left over wins. So although they aren't scoring you points while off your board, they are a, a tiebreaker as well. So there we have it. That's dollars to donuts. If I've piqued your interest, remember the campaign page is in the description and you can go and check out all of the final stuff that's being offered there. If you would like to know what I thought about the game, then that will be linked in the description too, or it'll be coming up on screen very shortly. If you'd like to check out more games, I've got nearly 400 on the channel right now. Maybe you'd be interested in some more puzzly tile laying games like Calico or Baron Park. Thank you for joining me for this one though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone. <laughs>